Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, and welcome to the return of Let's Do a Brew. And on this episode, I'm joined by a very special guest. Nathan, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks so much for having me. <laughs> I am so glad that you could come out and we can chat some magic today. For anybody that's not aware, why don't you let the people know who you are and where we can find you? Hi, uh, I'm Nathan. I am one of the hosts of the show Drawfee on YouTube, where we take dumb ideas and make even dumber drawings. And uh, I'm I'm ready to do a brew. Excellent. Uh, I have to start off by saying that I am a huge fan of Drawfee. Uh, oh, we've talked so about it. We've talked about it to death, but it's a great channel for anybody out there that isn't uh, isn't a fan or isn't following right now. Head on over there because uh, it, it's awesome. Great. We've uh, we've done episodes where we draw magic cards, so In including and I want to make sure that I get a, a version of this to throw up on screen right now. Uh, hot Tarmogoyf. Yes. Which is <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things that uh, has ever been created on the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Nathan, you and I talk a lot about magic and yes. uh, I, uh, some people out there might not know how big of a commander fan you are. So why don't you give us a little bit of an intro as to how you got introduced to commander? Uh, so that was, I believe, 2021 uh, was uh, going, going to hang out with some friends I hadn't seen in a while for reasons. And um they they had all gotten into Commander, and so I I went to my my local gaming store and uh, asked them for a recommendation for a precon, and the person at the store was just like, I mean, we've got these are sort of the themes. I think it's Commander, so just pick pick a theme that looks fun to you. And so I I went with the uh, Will Helt Zombie precon deck, brought it Classic. to the the game night, and. Um, it it played really, I mean, with, with that group, which is a very casual group, it played great out of the box. And then I uh, immediately, like, like I do whenever I get into, you know, it, something scratches that, that itch in my brain. I'm like, oh, I need to find out everything I can about this <laughs> hobby. So I went to see, uh, I went to look up ways to upgrade Will Help, uh, Will Help the Rock Cleaver Precon deck and... What what should I stumble across? But uh, the commander mechanic offering me great advice, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't until some time later that we actually found out we were mutual fans of each other, which uh, that's always wait, fun wait. to discover. I, I've got to say, is one of the most surreal situations that has ever happened, <laughs> where uh, I, I think I, I had liked or shared a tweet about one of your magic episodes. And you reached out and was like, oh, hey, you watch the show. Yeah. I watch your show. And I was just like, what is going on? <laughs> what, what is happening here? Well, that was uh, my but, reaction to seeing you tweet about my show. So that was <laughs> right. But since then, we've been going back and forth about yeah. magic. We've jammed some games together. And we've yeah. been talking about some of the decks that you've been looking to brew uh, and that's recently landed us on the brand new Vihan Gold Waker that was yeah. just released with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Uh, so this guy, uh, I'm going to have him up on screen right now, is a Mardu commander that cares about outlaws and animates your treasures. This one's really interesting. What piqued your interest about building it? Well, I mean, we we share the ginger beard connection, first and foremost. <laughs> Um, I've, I've never, I, I don't think I've ever brewed in, in Mardu actually. I'm, uh, but I, I really like sort of aristocrats style decks. Um, that's sort of the direction I ended up taking my, my Wilhelm deck. And mm -hmm. I just think treasures are a really fun thing in, uh, in magic. They're, they're really versatile, um, but but fair kind of you know like they're they're extra mana but they go away but then they have all these synergies they have all these artifact synergies and mm -hmm. by making them into creatures that all have a built-in way to sacrifice them uh i don't know it just there, there's a lot it, it feels like there's a lot of fun ways you could go with it um it feels like a versatile commander but not one that like does everything for you mm -hmm. sort of thing yeah, it's it's really interesting because a he's a, a cheap commander at just three mana. 
He yeah. makes it uh, very easy to cast and recast a couple of times. That's one of my rules of thumb is the lower mana value your commander, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to cast him once, twice, three times yeah. in a game. Uh, and the fact that Vhan has a couple of synergies with him as well, he cares about outlaws, uh, which uh, for those that uh, that aren't familiar, outlaws is a new classification of creature type that's been released with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. There's a quick mnemonic to remember this. Oh, I uh, love your it, mnemonic for this. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which is warm up, uh, <laughs> warlocks, assassins, rogues, mercenaries. Und pirates. <laughs> und und pirates. Uh, und pirates. Because w- without the und, it's just warm pee. Warm and <laughs> yeah, no, nobody likes remembering warm pee. Uh, so if you remember warm up, uh, yeah. then Vihan grants all outlaws vigilance and haste. But the important thing is that he grants all other outlaws yeah, vigilance himself. and haste. He does not grant himself vigilance and haste, which is important here because this is one of the commanders that I would consider an enabler commander, meaning he enables other things to happen rather than causes them to happen himself. Because his second ability about animating treasures and turning them into outlaws as well means that he doesn't create treasures. He has nothing on him that makes treasures. He has nothing on him that makes outlaws meaning he's really reliant on what is in the 99 of your deck and typically comes down once you have some sort of engine running, once you have outlaws out, once you have treasures out, or if you have a reliable way to make treasures. Now, when you were looking at him, did you want to go heavy into the treasure direction or the outlaw direction? I was thinking treasures. Um, Yeah, because he makes the treasures into outlaws. And so if you're if you're making the treasures, you can you can basically get all the benefits of him. And it's a it's a big benefit because there are some outlaws that also make treasures. Yeah. Meaning you get double dip on those synergies. So yeah. there there are some uh, some like the new generous plunderer out of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. He makes treasures for your opponents as well, but makes you treasures, too also being an outlaw. Uh, Grim Hireling is one that is incredible because whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you make two treasures. And that's basically making two extra bodies for each opponent you attack. And you can then use those treasures to attack each opponent to make more and more treasure. It's a real snowball there. But those are the kind of synergies that for Vihan, they're they're must-haves. Yeah, and uh, also uh, the the box commander from the the precon that he comes in, Olivia Opulent Outlaw, makes it so that uh, all of those treasures that are now uh, assassins because of Vihan uh, also make more treasures for you. Exactly. Yeah, which is uh, a great way to snowball. He is a a, a great snowball commander. Yeah. You get an engine running drop him down and he just makes you more and more and more value. Yeah. Uh, and the, the fact that the treasures are only creatures on your turn mm-hmm. is a great way to dodge things like sorcery speed board wipes. Yeah. So you aren't losing all of those resources. If somebody wrath of gods on their turn. That's true. It also means you, they don't uh, stay as blockers though. So that's something to consider as well uh and that that is very much uh, a point that is important here is that in traditional mardu style you're going pretty balls to the wall combat heavy attack heavy here you might be all or nothing uh but it's going to to come to the point where uh you might do an alpha strike and leave yourself open for a crackback if you aren't very careful about it yeah now, there, there are other ways to get a little bit more reach out of your treasures, too. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't mean reach as in the mechanic reach. No. I mean, you're <laughs> in Mardu colors and you're turning your treasures into creatures. And like you said, they have built in ways to sacrifice themselves. And yeah. black is known for their aristocrat effects. Is that going to play into the kind of vibe that you're looking for from this deck? 
Yeah, yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. And again, it's like important to balance, right? Like you want a, enough stuff that benefits from having lots of creatures to sacrifice, but not so much that you have, you run into a situation where you have all of these um, sacrifice benefits, but you don't have enough treasures to turn into creatures. Um, so, you know, right. fi- finding that balance is something that uh, I'm, I'm hoping uh, you might be able to help me with. And, and it's very interesting because there are some cards and some ways that you can essentially have your treasures replace themselves thanks to this aristocrat effect. Right, yes. Uh, um, Pitiless Plunderer and uh, what's that guy's name? The, um, oh, Mahadi Emporium yes. Master. Exactly, That's- exactly. So a, a few ways to turn your creatures dying or a lot of creatures dying into more treasures. Pitiless Plunderer is a one for one yeah. when you sacrifice a treasure, as long as it's been made into a creature. Right. Uh, with Vihan also granting your outlaws haste here too, it means that a newly made treasure that is animated into a creature can attack because it's got haste, right. still be untapped thanks to vigilance, and then post-combat sacrifice itself and replace itself. So none of that is wasted effort. None of that is wasted resource. And it means that you're incentivized to make new treasures and attack every turn. Yeah. Right. Uh, And with Mahadi, uh, you're making uh, as many treasures as bodies you've made in combat to yours or your opponents. So if they've got to chump block your treasures, you don't even have to sacrifice them and start making more treasure. Yep. Yep. Right. So great ways to capitalize on some of these synergies from these colors and these treasure creating aspects. Uh, there, there are others as well that are both uh, both outlaws and treasure generators. I'm a big fan uh, and the CDH community is as well as of uh, Lotho Corrupt Sheriff mm. from the uh, Lord of the Rings set yeah. as well. Uh, a great one that's kind of a staxy piece. Uh, being only two mana, he can come down before Vihan does, meaning you might have treasures ready to go on turn three to untap, drop your commander, turn them into creatures. Yeah, it's that that kind of value and that kind of curve to this deck that's going to have you coming out to a very, very quick start. Definitely. Yeah. Um, one of uh, one of the notes that I have here is uh, if. If Academy Manufacturer is not in this deck, I will cry <laughs> uh, because you're going to be making so many treasures, right? Oh, I, I have it. I have it on my I, I made sort of like a preliminary list uh, and it's it's for sure on there. Yeah, uh, Academy Manufacturer and then uh, a lot of a lot of card draw that sort of presupposes that you already have some treasures that are creatures. Um. But I was wondering if you had any suggestions for card draw that um, isn't so dependent on that. Because, like, obviously, like, Skull Clamp is great in this deck if you have some treasures. They can, you can sacrifice a treasure that has Skull Clamp attached to it, mm-hmm. use that one mana to attach it to another treasure. You know, you can draw as many cards as you want with that. Um, yeah, exactly. As many treasures as you have. You know what card has been uh, an all-star in my Wilhelt deck that I also uh, want to put in this one that you recommended was uh, is Body Count, which um, can just draw a ton of cards, and especially with any sort of aristocrat-type effect on the board, you're going to be able to play it for the spectacle cost um, just by sacrificing the treasures. Uh, for ho- however many treasures you want to sacrifice... Uh, you get to draw that many cards, and it just costs one black mana if you're doing any damage. I, I'm a big fan of body count if you can be making and sacrificing a lot of your own creatures, uh, or if you're going to be doing things like wiping the board and controlling how many creatures are dying. If you can do that, then it's a great infusion of uh, of additional card draw. Like you said, for a single mana, if you're spectacling it, and in this deck, you're going to have tons of synergies to that deal damage when you make treasures, and you're going to have tons of synergies for 
damage when you sacrifice treasures as well. Uh, so a spectacle cost is easy. Speaking of uh, wiping the board uh, and c- controlling how how that goes, um, I, w- I was wondering what you thought about maybe putting uh, something like Massacre Girl in this deck because, uh, you know, it's a effect that increases, you know, it snowballs depending on how many creatures it kills. And so you can you can sort of get the ball rolling there by just sacrificing a few treasures and then all of a sudden you're, you're wiping the whole board. Uh, and I really like Massacre Girl as long as you can recover from that board wipe before anybody else does. Yeah. That's the big challenge. So this would be uh, something where you want to cast Massacre Girl before V-Hand makes everything, all of your treasures creatures. Mm-hmm. Wipe the board, use your creatures, to, or your tokens, your treasures to recast V-Hand and then turn your remaining treasures into creatures so that you're swinging into an empty board. But if you're casting Massacre Girl and you're destroying your own treasures that you've turned into creatures, then you're net negative on this one. I'm really a bigger fan of sculptable board wipes okay. that play around destroying your own creatures. That makes sense. So like, th- there are some that are synergistic that just destroys everything. Like Blood Money, for instance, is it's a big expensive board wipe, but... In Commander, making a treasure for every creature that's destroyed is a great way to just untap next turn, next turn cycle, recast your Commander, and attack with dozens of treasures. True. Yeah. yeah Apart yeah, yeah. from that, there, there's uh, Organic Extinction, too, which uh, destroys all non-artifact creatures. It's big, and it has improvise meaning you can tap your artifacts to help reduce that 10 mana mana value yeah but it's a great way for you to uh turn all of your treasures into creatures attack with all of them since they've got vigilance after combat you can then blow up all non-artifact creatures and keep all of your treasures around Uh, a lot of these are out of other commander precons, uh, which means they're relatively affordable too. Uh, y- you can make some great decisions in building this deck to keep things relatively lower cost here. Is budget a concern in this build? Uh, for me, yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> obviously, uh, I- I'd love to, to own uh, an ancient copper dragon and a dockside extortionist. They'd be great in this deck, but, um, you know, I don't... Uh, you know, I could I could proxy them, but what happens with with my group of friends once once you start proxying, then like mm. you can start proxying whatever, and then the decks get kind of out of control. So there was yeah. there was a period where we were going pretty nuts with the proxies, and then we've we've sort of there was an arms race, and we sort of dialed it back a, a little bit. As happens when every deck controls a Gaius Cradle and mocks in. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's like, well, my yeah, may as well just <laughs> go all out in that in that regard. But yeah, no, I'd uh, I um, I I discovered that I just I just happened to own a uh, Reaver Cleaver because I I got the um, Dehada Legends precon mm-hmm. and that that came in that one. So I'm putting that in this list, but um. You know, that's that's probably the most expensive card I've gotten here. Well, Reaver Cleaver is an excellent addition. It's a great way for that uh, aggressive style that this deck is going to have to make you more and more treasures when it connects, which uh, which is fantastic. It's exactly what you want. It's combat focused. It's an equipment and it's going to make you more treasures in volume. And that's just more bodies for later. So it's perfect. And so, so we've spoken about Reaver Cleaver and Skull Clamp as being like two really good cards in this deck. Do do you think it's worth it to run some equipment tutor effects just for those two things, or not really? It depends on if you're going to have other tutor effects. We mm-hmm. or sorry, other equipment to make use of these tutor effects. Okay. We mentioned that that Vihan he doesn't really do a lot on his own. The other downside is that he doesn't really protect himself. That's right. the downside of being a three mana commander. They're expecting you to be able to pay five and seven mana if you want to recast him. But if you're going to include traditional ways to protect your commander, like a lightning greaves, 
in this deck. Yeah. Because you're up against opponents that might have a lot of targeted removal that are going to be able to spot remove him, you know, before you even move to combat and turn your treasures into creatures, then that's going to be feel like real bad yeah. in this brew. So having something like uh, Lightning Greaves in the deck to protect your commander ups the value of equipment tutor effects. I'm also a big fan in treasure decks or anything with Academy Manufacturer of Nettle Cyst, mm. which yeah. is the equipment with living weapons. So it makes a germ, but the equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. Yeah. And in this deck, that's going to be a lot. That's going to be minimum plus five, plus six on an equipment. And granted, it's just a straight addition of power and toughness. There's no evasion to it or anything. It still means that you've got one big bad attacker that you can build up. Yeah. And, the, you know, you, you, you have that and Reaver Cleaver equipped to the same creature. You're making a lot of treasures. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, and there there are a few uh, equipment tutors that you could include in here. Um, Steel Shaper's Gift was just reprinted in Commander Masters, mm -hmm. and it's a one mana sorcery tutor for an equipment card. Uh, and granted, none of the equipment that we're running are necessarily win cons in the deck. It still means that you can go and grab ways to make more treasures, capitalize yep. off of those treasures draw more cards i'm not a big fan of including a lot of tutors in mm -hmm. decks especially blacks tutors that let you grab anything and everything it means yeah. that your deck becomes a swiss army knife and you're able to find any solution when you want it i like these narrower tutors like this especially when you aren't trying to assemble a two or three card infinite combo right yeah i uh i don't i don't know that there are are there any infinite combos you can uh you can do with with vhan i haven't uh, i haven't even thought about that aspect of it so there are no doubt some that you can do within the deck itself mm -hmm. i don't think necessarily including vhan enables any infinite combos okay uh, so there are some treasure related infinite combos uh there are a couple around uh academy manufacturer which I'm a big fan of, um, and cards like uh, the Nuka-Cola machine out of oh, the yeah. Fallout set uh, that enables some infinite combos, too. Uh, if you want to build around that kind of thing, you can include those kind of synergies and those kind of combos. They require more specific cards around untapping artifacts mm -hmm. to get those kind of effects, uh, but they do run alongside treasure synergies. Yeah. There is no shortage of ways to break treasures in this game. Now, uh, along those lines, along those treasures lines, there are some uh, volume of artifact synergies that mm -hmm. should be considered in a list like this. So things that get you value from just creating artifacts. They right. might be in the same kind of boat as Vihan in that they don't create artifacts themselves. They don't create treasures themselves. But if 75% of your deck creates treasures, then 25% of your deck can care about treasures being created. And these would be creatures like some of my favorites, Reckless Fireweaver and Ingenious mm. Artillerist. Both and care about the volume of artifacts that you make. Yeah, Hedron Detonator as well. Uh, and ones that care about uh, tokens dying too, like Nadir's Nightblade. Yeah. And... Uh, one of the big reasons why I recommend including Nettle Cyst in the deck, Marionette Master. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. Let, let me tell you, that card is a win con in treasure decks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. If you do something like slap the Reaver, Reaver Cleaver or Nettle Cyst on a Marionette Master and then just start sacrificing your treasures, you're going to be doming opponents for seven and eight damage per artifact you're sacrificing. Yeah. Right. So that's a, a great way to ensure that you're turning, sacrificing your treasures or your creatures dying, your, your treasure creatures dying in combat into big benefits. It incentivizes your opponents to rather take three damage in combat than eight damage from chump blocking a 3-3. Three, three. Right. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think like for me, cause I've, I've got this, this list here of like a lot of stuff that makes treasures and a lot of stuff that, um, that benefits from you having treasures or having treasures that are creatures. Mm-hmm. And I guess you, you just said 75, 25. Is that like what, what you think makes sense to aim for? Like tw- 75% things that make treasure to 25% things that care about treasure. Yeah, I am a big fan in deck building of including more stake than sizzle yeah. in your deck. That's Meaning a, that's it, a good way to put it, yeah. Right. Uh, so th- it, it's more about uh, if everything cares about you making treasures, but less of your deck is dedicated to making treasures than getting the one or two things that make treasures, then you're going to find your deck is more uh, is less consistent right it is more difficult to play and it feels worse to play when you've got all of these creatures out like reckless fire weaver ingenious artillerist nadir's night blade and you've built up the board and you've got vhan out and you have no way to make treasures <laughs> yeah that, that is bad. going to be the worst <laughs> feeling yeah. and i i have had more people come to me with decks saying Chris, I can't get my deck to work. I can't get my deck to work. And I take a look at their list and I'm like, okay, well, you're an equipment deck and you have 12 equipment in this <laughs> yeah. list, right? Uh, or, you know, you're, you're an aristocrat deck and you have three sack outlets in this deck. So you really have to care more about what, uh, what is the enabler than what is, the, uh, what is enabling it, right? Yeah. And in this case, you're going to want more of your deck with the ability to create treasures yeah. using uh, synergistic card draw effects uh, like seize the spotlight uh, is a good one. Uh, yeah, that's a great one that uh, that gives opponents a choice. And when you have aristocrat effects that can sacrifice creatures, is this is a damned if you do damned if you don't choice for your opponents. Yeah, right. Either they can give you their creatures, which you can sacrifice or they're going to make you more treasures and draw you more cards. I do have that one. I do have that one written. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think like really I'm looking to like beef up my card draw. I think I, I currently only have about 10 card draw cards and they're all like, they're all really good. If I mean, they're, they're, they're good. Uh, particularly if I already have the treasures and V out, uh, mm-hmm. to make them work, um, skull clamp, body count, seize the spotlight, species specialist is great. Uh, love that you know, one. With love that one. All the treasures become assassins. Name um, assassin with it, and every treasure you treasure creature you sacrifice draws you a card. It's really good. Um, uh, how, how do you feel about some of the one-time card draw effects that also make you treasures? I'm thinking uh, the big score. Right. Oh yeah, I could put yeah, big score, um deadly dispute and then what's what's the other one that's big score but again, it's one of them's one of them's two two colorless, two red and the other one's three colorless, one red, but they both The one that you're thinking of is unexpected windfall. Oh, no one expects that one. You're right. You're right. It's <laughs> it's like the Spanish Inquisition. Like the Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. Would you would you recommend putting uh both both of those uh if you're going to include one, I would include both. Yeah. Uh, I think deadly dispute is another shoe in here because mm-hmm. sacrificing a treasure creature to replace itself and draw cards is easy mode. Even if you're sacrificing a non-treasure creature, Sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you're chump blocking and you want to get rid of that creature rather than have it die in combat. And yeah. drawing some cards, making some treasures is a great way to do that. What do you think about a card like uh, Vampiric Rites? Uh, so Vampiric Rites is, is always an interesting one. Uh, I'm always a fan if, uh, if you have more synergies for it than not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's expensive as a card draw engine. Yeah. compared to some of these other effects. It is an ongoing source of card draw, which is always great. I, I, I recommend you have more sources of ongoing card draw than one-time card draw yeah. in your deck, but prioritize those that have more synergies mm-hmm. with what the rest of your deck does. So the ones that we talked about that make treasures, 
and draw cards, I would include over something like Vampiric Rites, which just enables you to pay two mana and sacrifice a creature to gain a life and draw a card over and over and over again. That makes sense. Oh, another thing I wanted to ask about, um, because again, what I what I like about this deck and what I like about treasures in general is their versatility. And um they they really they added a bunch of really versatile cards in this new set with the um the spree mechanic. Yes. And um there are some there are some pretty good spree cards in red, white, and black. I was wondering what you thought about including any of those. Um, like Final Showdown, Great Train Heist, Insatiable Avarice. So I love having options in Commander, right? Uh, any modal spell that lets you choose how you can use it is great because it does exactly what you want it to do when you want it to do it. Spree takes that a step further and lets you do multiple things on a single card. Uh, so things like Great Train Heist, fantastic, especially in this deck where getting an extra combat with all of those treasures and enabling V-Hand to get another trigger at, a, at another start of combat yeah. is good because any treasures that you've made during combat from creatures dying just come back and attack again. That's all value for you and none for your opponent. But being able to scale this up and pump your creatures, give them first strike on top of the haste and vigilance that they have, and being able to make more treasures when you connect with an opponent, I think Great Train Heist is one of those ones that has a mode that is useful no matter where in the stage, uh, sta where in the game you are, what stage in the game you are. Yeah. Right. Um, Insatiable Avarice is an interesting one. Uh, I like the card draw mode on it more than I like the tutor mode on it. Yeah. Uh, because three mana to tutor the, to the top of your deck is a little above rate for a tutor to the top of your library. Uh, having a way to draw it, if you've already got Skull Clamp out, if you already have treasures that you can sacrifice, is a good way to make sure that you can put it on top of your library and immediately draw it. But as I mentioned, tutors in your deck kind of reduce the uniqueness of your deck or reduce the variance yeah. in your deck and uh depending on the play group that you're playing on depending on the power level or the agreements that you've had with your your friends and your play group it just might not be the vibe yeah totally right? but uh i like fun cards like return the favor for instance oh yeah great spree card lets you copy spells lets you change the target of spells or lets you do both so it's essentially, hey, thanks for all, spending all of that mana on that spell. It's mine now. Yeah. Right. The, those are always fun. I like that. Uh, but in this case, in this deck, doesn't play into any of our synergies. And it's really dependent on what our opponents are doing. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that a creature like Wandering Archaic has ever taught me, it's that if you want your opponents to cast Instants and Sorceries, it's the last thing that they're going to do. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So sitting there with four mana waiting for return the favor and an opponent's trying to cast or you're waiting for an opponent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, you're mm -hmm. going to go like three or four turns with nobody casting instants and sorceries. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> just going to sit in your hand. Yeah. But I like that's... the three cards. I really do. I think that they're nice, flexible spots uh, to fill your deck and uh, they, they've got a, a lot of great use for sure. Cool. Um, all right. Let's see. Because I, I did, you know, I looked at, I, I did a little bit of net decking uh, before, uh, before joining the call just because I'm, I'm newer to magic and there's just, there's just so many cards. Um, so it's, it's nice to see what other people are, are doing. Um, of course, I've got um, your recommendation for the perfect card to add to the uh the olivia precon i think uh works works great in in this deck as well kellogg dangerous mind yes. he's uh an outlaw he makes treasures and uh you also 
can sacrifice the treasures to gain control of something that then you can also sacrifice. Exactly, exactly. Well, one of the, the big benefits from Kellogg is that unlike a lot of those threaten effects where you're taking control of somebody else's creature, it doesn't end at end of turn. It's yeah. as long as you control Kellogg. Yeah. Meaning if somebody's trying to destroy Kellogg to get their creatures back and you've got some kind of sacrifice outlet, you can pop their creatures in response to that too. So they're basically never getting them back. And like you mentioned, he is an outlaw. He makes treasures, fits perfectly in our synergies. That's what I like to call a perfect overlap of synergy. Yeah. I, I map out my decks with what do I want to do and where are my synergies? So this would be one synergy is creating treasures. Another is being an outlaw. And if something both creates treasures and is an outlaw, then it falls where that Venn diagram overlaps and should be a shoe in for the deck. For sure. And um, yeah, you mentioned uh, sacrifice outlets, because again, th- I'm, I, I wasn't thinking too much about putting in uh, that many sacrifice outlets because mostly what we're going to be sacrificing is treasures. But do you think it's worth running some like cheap sacrifice outlets, like say like a Viscera Seer, for example? I, I think Viscera Seer will never be out of place in a deck, you're always going to have something to sacrifice to it, even if it's sacrificing itself. Mm -hmm. But it is a free sacrifice outlet and free sacrifice outlets, ones that you don't have to pay mana to sacrifice a creature for, are really, really strong in every instance. The the other ones that I would typically recommend are the altars. So Ashnod's altar, Phyrexian altar, which is on the higher uh, higher cash scale here, the higher uh, budget scale. Uh, but also one of my personal favorites, Altar of Dementia. Oh, too. sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, so Altar of Dementia, super cheap. And, you know, if you amass entirely too many treasures, it's potentially a win con, too, because you can yep. mill out opponents with it. Yeah, I've got I've got both Ashnods and uh, Altar of Dementia in uh, in my Wilhelm deck, and they they have won me games. Yeah. So let's, we, we've mentioned that there's quite a few individual cards that overlap with a deck that you already have. Yeah. Would you want to avoid those cards so that your decks don't feel samey? That's interesting. I, I, hmm. <laughs> I, I like, I feel like the cool answer is yes. I want my decks to all feel different, but I, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I feel like I'm the kind of person who like, once I find a play style that I enjoy, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm usually the one showing up to the table with the sort of aristocraty kill kill my own stuff to to hurt you type deck and it's just what what I like is finding different sort of shells for that. Mm-hmm. Um like you know there I I have one friend who's just his thing is he's going to make the biggest creature at the table and make it unblockable and swing it at you and he's got a bunch of different decks that do that. Mm -hmm. um i know you you love making copies of things i don't know i I feel like sometimes you just sort of you find the uh the thing you like doing and it's more about like you know doing doing that in mardu versus doing that in demir like how is it how does it feel different Mm -hmm. um and also since since i already have those cards i can just you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> saves saves me some money too. You know, I can just be like, I'm I'm playing I'm playing this deck today, and I just take out a chunk of cards from one deck and put it into another one. But yeah, I mean, th- there's definitely I I don't think there's a a wrong way to play a casual format like this. You know, you're just trying to find find what's fun, and in a 99 card deck. I don't know. Some, sometimes it's nice to see a friendly face, you know, something's like, <laughs> oh, I know what this one does. <laughs> I've right. I've had success with this in the past. Let's, uh, you know, let's play with our faves. But again, you know, putting, you know, balancing that with trying to make a, a deck that's cohesive. And, uh, you know, I know there's discussion about cutting your favorites in order to make the deck as a whole better and, and that sort of thing. And so, you know, I'm I'm still I'm still learning. I'm still I'm still figuring it out. No, you you hit some great points there. You're kind of preaching to the choir here. Yeah. I, half of my decks all make copies of things. So sometimes you just find that groove, that that happy place 
when it comes to deck building and that's really all you want to do in a game of magic and that's perfectly fine as well and i would never advocate uh cutting your favorite cards from a deck too like if you want to jam some of those altars or uh some of your favorite cards whether they have emotional meaning to you or they're just your favorites to play keep them in a deck always if it makes it more fun for you to play versus more consistent or different mm-hmm. then keep keep them in I, i'm always a, a fan of saying you know sometimes you got to kill your your children right you got to <laughs> kill your babies yeah. here but it, it's only if that's the way that you're going hey if you need if you're at 101 cards and you need to cut a card i'll i'll tell you cut your favorite card from there but if you say no i'll cut anything else from then that card I, I'm not going to push it. I, I won't argue. <laughs> yeah. Right. So if you don't mind having your decks kind of key into some of the same themes, like an mm-hmm. aristocrat theme here, then there is going to be a little bit of overlap in those. And I don't think that that's really a bad thing here. The thing that we do need to consider is with some of those overlaps, that needs to be the minority of the deck. The majority of the deck needs to be treasure creators right so what are some of your favorite treasure creators that for you are must-haves in this deck yeah i i was i was looking at at treasure creators and it's like they they seem to fall into sort of i don't know three ish categories like one-time treasure creator when it like it either enters or leaves the battlefield something that makes you treasures when it when it does something uh, oftentimes having to do with attacking and then something that makes you treasures whenever your opponents do something mm-hmm. are sort of mm-hmm. like, and so, yeah, I, I was kind of, I, I, I sort of just compiled a, a list of, of ones that I recognize. I mean, we've, we've already talked about some of them. Lotho, uh, is, is great. He's cheap and you're, you're going to be making treasures off of him until he gets mm-hmm. removed. Um, uh, you know, smothering tithe is like probably the most well-known one, but again, pretty expensive. So there's cheaper options like monologue tax and, um, Mm -hmm. uh, smuggler share are both. Yeah. Great options. I I have uh, on my list, smothering tithe, ob, ob, ob on my list like it's one of those anytime you think about a a treasure deck that includes white it's the the first card that anybody includes in building the deck provided you can afford it like you mentioned if we want to be a little bit uh budget conscious on this one smothering tithe might not make the cut it is one that i do own so i'm i'm probably going to put it in mine but um yeah great one and then uh yeah we also talked about cards that make treasures that that'll that'll make treasures or replace the treasures once you already have the engine going of mm-hmm. having some treasures to sacrifice having vhan out um and then yeah we've got like um uh magda brazen outlaw mm-hmm. there's um captain lannery storm there's um let's see per- professional face breaker yeah professional face breaker is one that i initially had on my list until i realized that she is not an outlaw yeah right she's a warrior she's operating within the law it's a, she's, right. it's just it's just a job she's a professional well, you she's know? a professional right she's <laughs> licensed so <laughs> yeah hey, hey if that's the case more power to you uh but it, we miss some of that overlap in synergy with right. some of those uh, I've got a few enchantments on my list oh, that okay. are ongoing creators of treasures right. because they uh, they stick around forever. They're harder to remove. Enchantments are notoriously one of the more difficult permanent types to remove since several colors don't remove enchantments. Uh, so I have uh, life insurance on my list. Oh, yeah. Life insurance is a very interesting one. It's five mana and it has extort meaning it can uh, provide you with some incidental damage and life gain. But it's whenever a non-token creature dies, you lose a life and create a treasure. Yeah. That's your non-token creatures and your opponent's non-token creatures. Right. So this is a great way to ensure as long as you're gaining some life and your opponents aren't wiping the board and draining your life total with this, that you can untap 
recast Vihan and attack with all of those treasures that you've created. This one is insurance at its best form here, <laughs> because if somebody wipes the board, you aren't set back to zero. You simply untap, drop your commander again and go to town with that army that your opponents have created for you. Yeah. I also really like Revel and Riches. Oh, sure. It, it is maybe my favorite alternate win con ever. Uh, but it, it draws it. Uh, it creates you treasure tokens when your opponent's creatures die. And mm-hmm. that's going to be happening whether you're controlling that or not. Because right. your opponents are going to be swinging at each other or they're going to be chump blocking your treasures. And they're going to be losing creatures. And that's just going to get you more and more treasures. With all of the inbuilt treasure generation you have in the deck, the alternate win con here is actually pretty attainable too. Yeah. So if you're looking at some of your win cons in the deck being combat with your treasures, aristocrat effects, and you add in an alternate win con in here, you have hit three different potential win cons in this deck. That's really what I feel is the sweet spot in a lot of decks. Have three different avenues to victory. If you can do that, then it means that, hey, if you can't attack anybody with your treasures, you've got to assemble that, you know, marionette master nettle cyst combo and start sacrificing your treasures. If somebody removes that marionette master and you can't get them back or that nettle cyst, you just can't find it. Well, then you fall back to your tertiary win con, which is something like, hey, I'm just going to drop revel and riches and hope that it makes it back to my upkeep because I already have 10 treasures out. Uh, so some of the uh, the other enchantments that I have on here um, are uh, <laughs> Reign of Riches, which is a great one. Reign mm-hmm. of Riches, uh, five mana enters the battlefield and makes you some treasures, but also allows you to cascade whenever you cast a spell or your first spell. This means that you can be cascading on opponent's turns if you're casting instants with really? treasure mana. So this is a lot of potential free value here. It makes you bodies in your V-Hand deck and later down the road starts getting you free spells too. Yeah. So I, I think it's just value on top of value here. But then the, the one that I have with several exclamation marks next to it in my notes is Descent into Avernus. Oh, sure. Uh, a great campaign also. Just a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, Descent into Avernus is uh, one of those we need to end the game now cards Mm -hmm. that in your case not only starts dealing a lot of damage to opponents turn over turn, but then starts making you a lot of bodies to put even more pressure on life totals and make sure that your opponents are losing a lot faster than you are. You know, I, th- I, it, it's, it depends what number game in the night that is. Cause if, yeah, <laughs> if it's the first game, it could, it could get some groans, but a- if, you know, after the first game goes for like three hours, then, you know, yeah. that's, that's when you, <laughs> that's when people are like relieved <laughs> to, uh, it's getting real late hours to have a right? game that just, it's <laughs> like, yeah, cause then, then it just means we get to play again, you know? No problem. Hey, earlier we we had mentioned some of the more expensive cards that likely aren't going to be included in the list, like Ancient Copper Dragon, Dockside Extortionist. I have on my list on the high end of this even Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. Oh, sure. He makes some treasures as well and is a pirate, so he gets the benefit from Vihan too. If somebody's looking to build this deck at a higher power level, a higher budget level. Those are absolutely includes here, too. Yeah. But one that that I've included with a, a, a bullet here is anointed procession. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anointed procession and uh, Mondrak both are. Yes. Know, those, yeah. Those doublers. But, but are very expensive. They're yep. very good. And they they are going to double up on the majority of cards in your deck that create treasures. But they're 50 and 60 dollars respectively. Yep. So if we're looking at keeping this relatively budget, keeping it to cards that you already own, these are likely ones that we're skipping here. But if we're going unlimited, if we're going absolutely buck wild with it, then these are cards that I would ensure that are included in this list. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I've got, you know, we got Zorn. (laughs) He's making one extra treasure each time. That's good enough. I mean, everybody loves a little Zorn guy. Speaking of good campaigns with Des- descent into avernus here yep but everybody loves a good zorn uh it's a shame he's not an outlaw 
because I'd love to see him in a cowboy hat and boots. Yeah. Uh, but if he's making you an extra treasure and uh, he's uh, upping the synergy of every card you have in the deck, it's a good time. Um, I remembered what I was going to say, which was it was it was just going to be a plug because we mentioned Descent into Avernus. I also I did draw a travel poster for Descent into Avernus on an episode of Drawfee. So uh, if if you if you've watched all the magic ones, you're still <laughs> you're still looking for some more uh, some more Drawfee content that uh, is related to what we're talking about here. Check out uh, travel posters for places that don't exist. Uh, another fantastic episode and great art i'll see if i can flash up a, a screen grab of that too here <laughs> welcome to avernus yep yep uh awesome uh now so there there are a, a few additional synergies that i have with a uh, an asterisk here okay. uh, and those are synergies for artifact creatures mm -hmm. okay this is what i would consider a tertiary synergy in this deck because it means that you, A, already need to be creating treasures, and B, already need to have your commander out. Yep. So at that point, do you need even more synergies? So things like Tempered Steel, that gives uh, artifact creatures plus two plus two, mm -hmm. is that worth it? Or is that something that's just a hat on a hat in a deck like this? Mm. I don't know. As... Uh... What do you think? <laughs> so, uh, again, I, I think that it's a step too far here. Okay. I, I think that this is a matter where your deck is already humming. You're already doing what you want to do. This is just overkill. It's okay. over the top. You're turning three threes into five fives. And that's not really going to matter much when you have a dozen of them already. Right. So there, there are some things that you can include that do that. But... Is it worth it? In my opinion, probably not. If I were to include something that pumps my creatures, I would include a shared animosity in this list, right? And that is whenever a creature you control is attacks, it gets plus one, plus zero for each other attacking creature that shares a type with it. So this is basically your treasures get plus one, plus zero for each attacking treasure. Yeah, speaking, speaking of hat on a hat, uh bonus synergies what what do you think about a card like uh Neali sun's vanguard giving your treasures a double strike and then also letting you do some uh some command is it what's it called command draw yeah uh, and if if Neali were an outlaw mm -hmm. i would say she's a shoe in right but she misses one of our synergies in here right uh so she again is one of those things that only works if we're already doing the course concept of our deck right she doesn't help the core concept of our deck work but she cares that we're already doing it which means if you draw a naoli instead of something that makes treasures it's going to feel real bad for sure so the more we water down the deck with things that care that we're already doing the core concept of our deck rather than the items that do the core concept of our deck it's going to make uh, our draws feel bad. It's going to make the deck inconsistent to play. Right. And while it's got benefit, I, I think giving your treasure tokens haste, vigilance, and double strike is very, very good. It's one of those things where, hey, if, if Naoli's in my opening hand and I have no treasure generators in my opening hand, or if I top deck a Naoli instead of a treasure generator, I'm going to be pretty disappointed by that. Yeah. For sure. Um, and then I had one other one other sort of, uh, I guess, card type that we, we hadn't talked about yet, but feels um, like it p could potentially be good or or distract, you know, uh, or, or not. I, I'm not sure is um, just uh, some some sort of uh, recursion type stuff since since we are in black and. Um, like what comes to mind immediately is something like Vat of Rebirth because we're mm -hmm. going to be sacrificing uh, a lot of artifacts and creatures and getting a lot of oil counters and mm -hmm. you know if we uh, you know if if one of our one of our good uh, win con cards gets removed before we can use it having a way to to get it back might be might be something we want uh, absolutely it it falls at a great mana value it's repeatable. And those are things that you really want to look for in these sources. 
Mm -hmm. A lot of people will include one-time effects like this. Uh, and I, I think that's really discounting some of the uh, so, some of the values of recursion. And mm -hmm. that is that you can recur a creature over and over again. Uh, if you're looking to cheat mana costs, the one-time options that bring something directly into play are great. But in this, we're not going to have problems putting oil counters on, on this card. One of my favorite from an ongoing recursion standpoint is Oversold Cemetery 2. And, okay. and that is as long as you've got four creatures in your yard at the beginning of your upkeep, you return one of them to your hand. Right. Uh, and again, that of Rebirth, your suggestion, absolutely fantastic here. It's one mana. Oversold Cemetery, two mana. They're ones that just sit on the battlefield until you can use them. And once you build up the resources, whether it be creatures in your, your yard for Oversold Cemetery or oil counters on it on that of Rebirth, it's one of those ones that your opponents are just not going to pay attention to until you're bringing back your big bomby creatures over and over and over again. Yeah. So all fantastic recommendations there. But I, I think we've got some uh, some good cards in this list. Uh, we've got some good synergies in this list. And uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be taking our conversation and I'll be distilling it into uh, my list based on the cards that we've discussed some cool. of the recommendations that we've both made. Uh, and we'll have that to share for everybody at the end of this video. Uh, but yeah, Nathan, th this has been fantastic. I, I know that you said that you were new to this and that you wanted my opinion and, and my feedback on this, but you've made some excellent recommendations here. Uh, I think you. you're, you're really getting a hang of this deck building kind of thing. That's for sure. Thanks. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Wow. <laughs> But uh, before we go, I want to give you another opportunity to let people know where they can find you. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Nathan. I'm at, at Nathan Yaffe on Twitter. I don't tweet very often, but uh, I am there. And uh, Drawfee on YouTube. It's, uh, it's a drawing show. It's a lot of fun. We, we make silly drawings and uh, we, we try and make each other laugh. And uh, my co-hosts are all delightful and super talented. And, um, I also stream, uh, on Twitch, uh, Nathan's other show. I, uh, I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate three, mm -hmm. um, doing an honor mode run. Uh, I'm not super consistent on there, but if, you know, if, if you see me on there, you can watch me play some video games and maybe, maybe we'll get some, some magic games on there at some point. That'd be, that would be super fun as well. That would be a blast. I'm looking forward to the next time we jam some games. That's for sure. Uh, but Nathan, this has been a blast. Thank you. And uh, oh, thank you for everybody out there. Check out Nathan's links in the description. And uh, I'll cut right now to the deck list. There it is. All right, folks, here's the full deck list. Nathan and I had a blast putting it together, and it looks like a real strong one. It's a very Mardu, very aristocrats take on a treasure's deck. The full list is in the description at my sponsor, Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world and makes it easy to brew on the fly like this. While you're there, be sure to follow my profile. And while you're here, make sure to check out some of my other brews and go say hi to Nathan over on Drawfee too. If you were inspired to brew today, you have to hit that subscribe button. And as always, folks, good luck and have fun.